In 2013, Sue came down with a cough she just could not get rid of. So I thought maybe it was allergies, and it was summer, and fall was coming, and could it be, you know, the tree pollen, whatever. And so I called my amazing uh, nurse practitioner, Jen McKenna. She called me and she said, it's been a while now, but this cough has not gone away. (laughs) And she said, just take some Claritin and do the inhaler if it's trouble breathing. And I said, okay, if it doesn't go away in a week, call me. But it didn't go away. (laughs) And I said, okay, let's get you set up for scans. Sue went into the lab at Dana-Farber. She'd been treated there a decade earlier for breast cancer, but had been in remission ever since. And so then she said, you know, we have to do scans because you just don't know. And just so you know, you know, and I was like, no, I know. You know, it's the conversation of could it be something, right? Sue had the scans and went home. Back at Dana-Farber, Jen looked over the imaging. And I didn't need a radiologist to tell me what was happening. You know, I could just see these all these big kind of fluffy white balls in all of her lung fields. Sue is at home in the kitchen when the phone rang. It was Jen. She called to say I had tumors all over my lungs. There was a lot of cancer in her lungs, and it was remarkable that she had just two months prior ridden in the PMC. The PMC, or Pan Mass Challenge, is an annual 200-mile bike ride across Massachusetts to raise money for cancer research at Dana-Farber. I mean, I just couldn't believe it based on what I saw. This is My Body Odyssey, a show about the rewards and challenges of an active lifestyle. I'm Robert Pease. Today is the third episode in our mini-series on cycling and cancer. Last time we heard from Generational Gene, trying to ward off cancer, who finished the Pan Mass Challenge for the fifth time this year. Some days, you know, it feels like you pedal to save your life, and, you know, in a lot of ways, these sort of events, you really are. Today's episode is about another PMC rider, Cycling Sue, whose commitment to the PMC is even more substantial. This will be my 20th year of riding the Pan Mass Challenge. But what's more remarkable is that for 10 of those years, Sue has been riding with metastatic breast cancer. This story comes from our producer, Debbie Bleacher. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Rob. Debbie's joining me today to dive into Sue's odyssey of cancer and cycling. But before we do that, we want to draw your attention to something unique and special about this particular episode. Yeah. On My Body Odyssey, usually we bring in outside medical experts for their comments and insights. We introduce our protagonist's stories to them, so they're hearing all of this for the first time. But for this episode, Sue introduced us to her medical team. Yeah, so a big thanks to Sue for being so open, willing to share her story, and for making these introductions. And thanks, too, to these oncologists for speaking with us. And let's get right into that story. So when I got my first bike, I'm going to guess I was around five, and I loved it. Um, And I will proudly say I didn't need training wheels. I was a good balancer. By age 10, Sue is already taking bikes apart and putting them back together. And at that age, bikes are about so much more than just transportation. I bought a 10-speed and just rode all around and just loved it. It's such freedom to ride. Sue kept riding as she grew up and through college and through her first jobs. When she got hired to run a lab at Children's Hospital in Boston, Sue biked the 10 miles to work every day. That's a podcast for another day, because life in the virology lab was awesome. But then, her life changed in 2003. Um, I had noticed a lump, and at 40 then, it was the time to do a mammogram. So we did the mammogram, and, you know, it was, you know, cancerous. She had no family history of breast cancer, and it's rare to get it so young. People under 40 make up just a tiny fraction of all breast cancer cases. So this really came out of nowhere for Sue, and her doctors were saying they needed to act fast. You know, this is serious. You know, it was stage 3B, so it was in my lymph nodes. So much new information coming at her, so much to process, and so many decisions needed to be made. So you are, like, taking whatever is being put in front of you and uh, processing, is this the right team? You know, what do I need to do? 
Sue felt pretty lost at first, but she felt she was in good hands when she met her oncologist, Dr. Ernst. He said my cancer was aggressive and he wasn't going to, you know, lie about that, but his goal was to make me an old lady. I just felt as though he was a person I could trust with my life. Dr. Ernst and the team, they guided Sue through a long and demanding series of treatments, chemo, antibody treatments, surgery, then more chemo and radiation. So it was it was pretty, you know, rigorous and uh, intense. Despite all that rigor and intensity, Sue made it a point to get to know the whole staff, and they got to know her. And she noticed when a new NP named Jen McKenna joined the team. You know, like she was all in, you know, welcoming me to Dana-Farber. And so, you know, I just really liked her right away. After eight months of treatment, Sue was cancer-free. They just took such great care of me. I said, I don't know how I would ever repay all of you for what you've done. One of Sue's doctors told her exactly how she could repay them. And she said, oh, you can ride the Pan Mass Challenge. And it's strange growing, or not growing up here, but living here for many years, I had never heard of it. So I said, okay. The Pan Mass Challenge raises money for cancer research. In the 40-plus years the PMC has been around, it's raised almost a billion dollars for Dana-Farber. It's no surprise that many of the riders are cancer survivors or family members, people who have lost loved ones to cancer. But there's also a lot of riders who are medical professionals in the field, clinicians, researchers, people at the forefront of trying to cure cancer. I rode in it initially in 1998 and then participated in it for a total of 22 years. Dr. Eric Weiner is president of the Smilo Cancer Hospital at Yale. He's one of Sue's former oncologists and one of many doctors at Dana-Farber writing the PMC. We formed a team that we initially called WOW, Women's Oncology on Wheels. Dr. Weiner invited Sue to ride with them on Team WOW, and Sue accepted. There was just one small problem. I was more than glad to give it a whirl, but I hadn't ridden a bike in years, so that was the, uh, and I didn't have a bike, so. At this point, it was three months until the PMC, so Sue needed to start training. So you said, okay, I'll do it, but you didn't even own a bike. Correct. She went to her local bike shop and walked up to the bike guy. I said, let's get a road bike and, you know, nothing, you know, outrageously expensive, And uh, I even said, maybe not even a road bike. And he said, oh, you can ride, you know, you're not 90 years old. You can ride a rolled handlebar bike. I said, okay, great. Sue brought home the new bike, started her training rides, and those rides were long. That's when reality set in. She had a moment of like, wait, what did I agree to? And I said, I don't know if I can do this. You know, uh, I just finished all this treatment. She confided some of that concern to a coworker someone who'd ridden the PMC. And he said, it's a ride, not a race. Sue's colleague made that important distinction there between cycling races and rides like this one. There's no competition, no one watching times very closely, and lots of snacks. The pep talk was a game changer for Sue, and it allowed her to take a deep breath and enjoy the process. For me, it's just being you know, so grateful for how blessed I am and realizing that my ability to ride is, it's a gift. On a hot morning in August, Sue got on her bike and rode to the start of the Pan Mass Challenge. When you arrive, there are thousands of people and everyone wears that year's PMC jersey. A sea of cyclists all wearing that same shirt and all preparing to ride hundreds of miles for the cause. It was emotional, you know, to be there and to say that I was going to do this. And I'll not lie, it was a hot and hard day to ride. It's early morning. The sun is still low in the sky, but it's already apparent it's going to be ungodly hot out there. A woman who I didn't know just kind of, you know, bent over and said, oh my gosh, You're really sweaty, and we haven't even started riding yet. Bit of pre-ride anxiety there. Remember, it is Sue's first Pan Mass Challenge. 
Then the riders lined up for the start of the ride while the national anthem played over the loudspeaker. And then they start playing U2, It's a Beautiful Day. And it really does sum up, you know, it's a beautiful day. Here I am riding the Pan Mass Challenge. And it was a beautiful day, but also way hotter than Sue expected. You know, never riding it, I never realized the first week in August is usually very, very, very hot. And I don't think I had fully grasped the water, the Gatorade, staying hydrated. So, I, you know, I was fine, but, you know, I became a, better at my uh, hydration breakout. Sue got more and more dehydrated over the course of the day, out in the scorching sun. But she toughed it out, determined to finish. Also, I had just been through probably six months of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Not many people would be up to this challenge. But Sue says she was able to do it because she always stayed active, even during the really tough periods of her treatment. For me, part of the feeling that I had control of this was being active. So walking every day to the mailbox, you know, a mile away in town to bring my thank you notes was what I would do. Despite the heat, the long course of treatment, and not even owning a bike a few months ago, Sue did finish her first Pan Mass Challenge. So if I look back and say, wow, I rode, you know, 80 some miles on day one, that's pretty good. But it was hard. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. The following year, Sue showed up to the starting line of the PMC again, and then again the next year, and the next 10 years. And all that time, she's cancer-free. And that brings us right up to the moment she finished the ride in 2013 and came down with that mysterious cough, the one we heard about earlier. After getting the news about the tumors on her lungs, Sue went in to see her doctors. And so I went in the next day, you know, some some friends came with me, which was great because that's something too, again, you don't want to sit there by yourself and listen to all this. Originally, Sue's diagnosis was breast cancer, but now the cancer was in her lungs. That meant it was metastatic. Metastatic disease is when breast cancer has spread to a different part of one's body or what we call a distant spread typically. Dr. Rachel Friedman is Sue's current oncologist at Dana-Farber. People can live years with metastatic breast cancer. There's so many treatments available. There's more every year. And the idea when somebody has breast cancer that needs to be managed more like a chronic condition is to have people live with their breast cancer, right? And that is the goal, to have them live the best life and have the best quality they can have. But usually it is with some form of treatment going on in the background of that that is ongoing. This time, Sue's treatment lasted six months. She had to go in and get chemo once a week, plus get doses of two monoclonal antibodies. Despite having to go in every week for such a long period, Sue did find the side effects a bit more manageable this time. I lost my hair again, you know, round two. As my friends say, um, I'm lucky I have a nicely shaped head, which I do. Soon that persistent cough got a little better. Sue got rescanned. And this time, they saw the tumor shrinking. She felt so relieved, but she knew she wasn't fully in the clear. The challenging piece for metastatic breast cancer, and another reason I ride, is there isn't one treatment to say you're cured. So you live with the disease. It's chronic. Ever since that phone call when she learned about the tumors on her lungs, she sees Jen McKenna and her oncology team once a month to try and stay ahead of this. That began the journey of me seeing Sue essentially it, at least every three weeks for the last 10 years. And I get any number of treatments uh, over these 10 years. There have probably been, I don't know, six or seven different versions of treatment. And through all of that, Sue stayed very active, whether it's delivering thank you notes, 
playing pickleball, or riding the Pan Mass Challenge every single year. She's doing remarkably well. I am curious about what you can tell me about the interaction of exercise and breast cancer or cancer in general. Well, I wish I could tell you more. It goes without saying that nobody would argue that exercise is bad for you. Dr. Weiner is one of Sue's former oncologists. We met him earlier. Although I tell my patients that if they can get exercise, that's a great thing. I'm not prescribing it the way I would prescribe a drug. Dr. Weiner is a highly experienced clinical oncologist. Of course, he's careful about suggesting that exercise can cure cancer or anything like that. But he does say the benefits of exercise for general health and well-being, those are quite clear. I think that a physically active lifestyle, however you want to pursue that, is something that in general makes people happier, makes people more productive. Sue's nurse practitioner, Jen McKenna, feels exercise is really valuable for successful treatment. It can really help them tolerate everything better, including the difficulty with uncertainty around cancer. Is my cancer going to come back or is my cancer going to respond? You know, how long am I going to live? Exercise is a really important tool that we can use to help people with their mental health. Jen and Sue are in complete accord about this exercise, mental health, resilience. And over the years, they've started to keep each other motivated. Sue and I are Peloton friends, and we do rides together sometimes. I don't think I knew that you were a cyclist. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Well, I will clarify, I am not. I am only a Pelotonist. I am not a cyclist, so I am not out on the road much at all, much to Sue's disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> and she has tried to convince me to ride in the PMC frequently for the past 15 years. <laughs> Sue completed the PMC for the 20th time this year. It wasn't nearly as hot this time. And at this point, she hydrates like a pro. She still remembers what that woman said to her at the starting line when Sue was sweating so much. But now she's kind of proud of it. I'm super sweaty. You know, I usually try to strive for the sweatiest person of the PMC award. This year, Sue rode with the same team she's ridden with since 2004, the one her oncologists invited her to join. Although over the past 20 years, it's gotten a lot bigger. We were this weekend 95 people, which is really amazing uh, because I think we're on track to raise $800,000 for the Dana this year. Sue shows up every year for this ride to raise money, help the cause. And she also shows up because of the community she's found through the ride. These people get what she's going through. You know, I mean, I think she really leads by example. You know, I mean, she's always thinking about other people and what will make them happy. She doesn't spend any time feeling sorry for herself. Why me? None of that. She just keeps living her life, you know, doing all the things that make her happy in a way that we all should. You know, we can learn from that. Sue plans to ride the PMC for as long as she can especially for the members of that community who are no longer with her. You know, I struggle, you know, with survivor's guilt. I've had many friends who I've met through this journey, right? And, um, you know, they aren't here. And so I need to do something. You know, I need to keep giving back. I also know that they would say, just keep pedaling. What are you, crazy? So they're still my champions. That's our protagonist this episode, Cycling Sue, metastatic breast cancer survivor and avid PMC rider who leaves it all out there on these rides, some of it in small puddles. I have to ask, how did you do on the Sweatiest Person Award? I, I, good question. I, I've <laughs> crowned myself such as Sweatiest Person again. Hurrah. Feel good about it, exactly. <laughs> Fabulous. Many thanks to Cycling Sue for sharing her odyssey and allowing us to speak with their oncology team, both present and past. And huge thanks also to Drs. Weiner and Friedman and nurse practitioner Jen McKenna for educating us on the challenge of metastatic breast cancer. Next time on My Body Odyssey, we're going to put the bikes down and put wetsuits on to swim along with open water Annie if we can keep up with her. Annie swims at a very high level, but with no interest in competing. 
Instead, her swimming is motivated by what a half hour in open water can do for the anxious mind. The science tells us when we're injured and we're in a hospital bed and we can see a tree out the window, that helps aid our healing. And being here, swimming here versus in a pool helps my healing and helps you know, me um, keep myself, I guess, as, uh, as calm. And, and that's not an easy thing in our society, in our culture. Please join us, Oceanside, for that interview with Annie and some expert insights on the many benefits of open water swimming for PTSD, other anxiety disorders, really for anyone, which is essentially everyone, who struggles with stress management. My Body Odyssey is a Fluent Knowledge production, original music by Ryan Adair Rooney.